So yeah, welcome back to the CS580 computer graphics. Uh, so last time what we have discussed is that we started to discuss like how we can apply the idea of like the Monte Carlo the estimate uh, in terms of like calculating uh, not only the uh, the local the uh, illumination but also the global illumination. So we start to see some kind of the effect of the indirect uh, illumination uh, in terms of the if we basically accumulate uh, the paths uh, in the ray tracing with the multiple devices. Like this was the case that we are only basically caring about some kind of the direct the emission of the light from the light source. Uh, and then this is kind of the case that we are also accumulating the direct illumination uh, with a single bounce of the, the paths. And if we start to basically accumulate some more kind of the some indirect illumination, then we can start to see some kind of the more like natural kind of illuminations that is basically uh, showing this kind of the outputs. So with some kind of the indirect illumination, we can also see some kind of the uh, regions uh, in the virtual 3D really scene, uh, which are not directly visible from the light source and also the, the viewing the, the camera direction, uh, but some kind of like the, the parts that can be illuminated by some kind of the multiple the bounces of the lights. Uh, so those are kind of some of the outputs. Uh, and for that, basically what we have done last time is that we are kind of like rewriting the reflecting equation as kind of the uh, light transport equation, uh, which is basically having the both the, the light source term on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So in terms of that, uh, we are having some kind of the recursive form of the equation. So we could basically rewrite uh, the light transport, uh, light transport equation into this kind of the uh, three point different uh, in terms of like having, uh, considering the area of the kind of regions and those light sources. And when he basically introduced this new term, the G, uh, which basically incorporates the visibility and also this kind of the cosine the terms, uh, we can basically uh, have this kind of the simplified uh, the form of the uh, light transport equation. So here, basically, the question is that how to basically calculate this kind of the complex form. So especially uh, if we also rewrite this kind of the recursive form uh, by replacing, substituting the light source depart uh, with some kind of the, uh, the calculation, which is coming from the next kind of the bounce of the trajectory, uh, we can see that actually the recursive form can be uh, rewritten this like the way. So we are basically accumulating this kind of the some light the uh, equation uh, from the uh, path of the length of the one, uh, which is the case that we are just having like direct the emission of the light. And the path of the length two is the case that we are having the direct illumination. And path of the length three is the case that we are having the indirect illumination and so on and so on. Uh, so we are basically adding up all those kind of things. Then we can see that this equation can be seen as like this, basically adding all these kind of the, the terms that represent denoted as the key, uh, which is that we define with the uh, kind of a path, uh, basically with the, the ray tracing. And here, basically, this P bar uh, indicates a kind of the trajectory of the ray tracing, which basically involves multiple kind of the bounces uh, in the scene, and every kind of the point P is basically indicating the point of the surface that we are seeing some kind of the, the reflections of kind of the lights. And then we can see that the kind of the, this P term can be defined as kind of the multi-dimensional integral uh, over the path. Uh, while this basically looks the complicated, uh, this is basically kind of like nothing, but basically we are multiplying the, the emission of the light uh, from the light source uh, with the throughput of the path. And this through the path uh, can be seen as kind of the fraction of the light uh, from the light source uh, at the P end, uh, at the end, like we are basically reaching to the light source. And then basically we are seeing the fraction of the light that is really coming uh, into the, the point in the image plane. So when you basically calculate this kind of the, um, the multiplication of the light source and the, the throughput of the path, and when you basically add up all these kind of things, uh, for the, all the multiple the passes uh, that we are basically tracing in the scene, uh, we can get the final, basically the, uh, the light information uh, for every pixel of the image plane. So the simplest idea that we can basically calculate these things uh, using the multiple the estimate uh, might be that basically for each of the peak term, we are basically having the single the sample of the path. Uh, then basically the multiple of the estimate for each of the peak term can be defined in this way, uh, having some kind of the multiplication of the light emission, uh, the radius, uh, multiplied by the, the, the throughput, and also dividing this by the probability, or how likely we are going to sample that trajectory. And if we sum this up, uh, then we can get some kind of the estimate uh, of the basically the final the outgoing the radiance that is actually uh, coming into the, the pixel in the image plane. 
So that was the basic idea of some kind of the, uh, the global illumination. And what we uh, basically do with this kind of the ray tracing based uh, the rendering system is basically implementing these things uh, with some, uh, some lots of some kind of details uh, in the implementation. Obviously, we are not going to basically discuss all the details, uh, but there are like lots of kind of some things that we can really consider, especially to make some kind of more efficient uh, the Monte Carlo estimate. Uh, but we're going to basically see some kind of the very basic idea uh, in the today's lecture. Uh, before we move on to the, do you have any questions on this? So yeah, let's see. So basically here, all the thing is basically how we trace all the paths of the, the rendering, the, the ray tracing disease that in terms of like calculating uh, this kind of integral. And the first idea of like this was actually introduced almost like 40 years ago uh, by uh, uh, Kazia in, in 1986. So this was kind of the first image uh, which was basically rendered uh, by this kind of ray, ray tracing the system, uh, which is called by this tracing the path of the lights. And this has been basically used in the many kind of the uh, physically correct, some kind of rendering the pipelines. And as you can see, as we have some kind of the more number of the passes, uh, we can get some kind of the better the outputs, which looks like more realistic. Uh, so this is kind of the case that when you only have the, like one sample of the trajectory in the per pixel, Obviously, there are many cases that we have some kind of the dark the pixels. And as we have basically have some more the samples of the trajectory for the pixel, uh, we can see some kind of the more slightly more the realistic images, but still there are some of the dark the pixels that are basically not really reaching to the uh the light source. And as we have some kind of the more the number of samples uh for each of the single lead pixel, that we can get some kind of the more the accurate outputs. But as you can see. Uh, this is the case that we are having like 1,024 samples for every single the pixel. So when you want to think about the number of the pixels, you can see that this basically involves like huge computation uh, to basically you know, get this like single image. So to get the realistic image, like this is kind of like difficulty computation uh, that might be involved in uh, to get some kind of this level of the realistic images. So it's basically all about basically how to make this kind of the uh, the rendering pipeline more the efficient. So the main two questions uh, in the ray testing the the path tracing the system is basically how do we basically estimate the value of the sum of the uh, infinite number of these kind of the p terms uh, with a finite amount of the, the computation. So with some kind of the best quality. And also given the particular the, the p term, how do we generate one or the more number of the passes uh, to compute the multiple estimate of, of these the uh, multi-dimensional the interval. So those are basically some two main questions uh, to make some kind of efficient like, the path tracing the system. So one simple kind of the idea that we're gonna also uh, basically see uh, here is basically the uh, the this kind of example. So basically what we have seen in the previous slide is that uh, we will see some kind of the um, the the shooter the passes. Uh, basically, as you can see here, we can decompose the the sum of the, all these kind of the p term with the multiple the trajectories uh, into the kind of the sum of the kind of p terms for the shooter the passes. Uh, for the so p one is the case that we having the uh, pass of the length one, uh, which means that we are basically uh, taking care of some by the way the light the emission. And the P2 is basically the uh basically for the path of the lens two, uh, which is the case that we are thinking like the direct illumination. And this is kind of the case that we are starting to see some kind of indirect illumination with the uh path of the lens three. And as we also have seen in the previous slide, actually, these kind of the three cases uh with some kind of short deep passes actually contribute uh the most of the part uh, in, in deciding the final image. Uh so while we basically have some kind of the when you basically have some kind of the trajectory with the uh, the longer passes, uh, can make some kind of the more realistic the outputs. Actually, the the contribution of the longer passes is kind of the uh, much smaller uh, compared to the, the passes with the, the shorter basically the lengths. Uh, and but basically, when you have some kind of longer the passes, that basically involves some like more the heavy computation. So here, the simple the idea that you can basically. Uh, do some kind of a calculation uh, with some kind of the limited amount of the, the, the computing resource uh, would be basically just like ignoring some of these kind of the, uh, the longer the passes. So for example, like we just limit the, the length of the, the pass to be like, and to be uh, equal or less than the three, then we just like totally ignore this part, right? 
But this is not good in terms of that we are also making the bias in our the kind of the estimate. So obviously we totally just like ignore this kind of the, the terms with the longer the passes. Uh, then we're gonna see some kind of the, the case that we are having some kind of the estimate, uh, which is which expected value uh, is not exactly the same uh, with the integral that we want to calculate. So here basically the big one of the question is that how can you make the estimator to be unbiased? while basically also reducing the competition, the heavy competition with the normal devices. Uh, so that's basically what we are going to, we typically want to do, right? Uh, obviously we want to limit the length of the passes uh, to basically limit the, basically the, the competition, the time and the, the power. Uh, but then the, here the question is that how we can still make some kind of the unbiased estimator uh, in terms of having some kind of the limited amount of the, uh, uh, some kind of the, the, the length of the, the passes in the competition. And here the basic idea is basically the Russian roulette. Uh, so the question here is that uh, we are basically uh, defining some kind of a new estimator in this way. So let's say like the F4 is basically the estimator of the like sum of this like P term uh, for the passes, which length is like four or longer than four. Uh, so here the question is how we can uh, you know make the competition like this part to be efficient, right? And in here, what we are going to do is that we are going to define some kind of the new estimator, uh, which is defined like this. So here, basically, what we are going to do is that uh, we are going to draw a same kind of sample uh, from the uniform distribution in the range from the zero to one. And we also have some kind of this threshold the parameter, which is the Q. Also, the Q should be basically in the range from the zero to one. And if this sample has the value which is greater than the threshold that we set, then we basically have uh, this quantity as the output. Otherwise, we are basically having some kind of the constant value as kind of the output of the estimator. So here, basically, what you can see is that, uh, so we are having the two parameters, like one is Q and the other one is C. And if we make this C to be zero, then what we can see is that like these things are canceled out. Then basically when the uh, random sample is greater than this threshold, then we somehow scale uh, the uh, you know, the estimator, which is computed based on this way. Otherwise, we just like give some kind of return like the value zero. So this is kind of like our the new estimator. And can you quickly see like what to be kind of the uh, expected value like this new estimator? So we see the, here the basic idea is that you no know, the expected value of like this new estimator is the same uh, with the expected value of the F four, which means that uh, this is kind of like one way that we are making some kind of the unbiased the estimator, while basically having some kind of the chances that we are uh, we can basically ignore uh, the competition like this whole part. But we need to see like why we need to have this kind of some scaling and the offset term. Uh, to make the unbiased estimator. So let's quickly check out whether these two are the same or not.
did everyone get this result? Yeah, so we can actually quickly see that actually the expected value of like this new estimator become the same uh, with the expected value of the original estimator. So actually basically here the idea is that you no, know, uh, we know that the uh, the the path is with the longer kind of the, the length is basically typically giving some kind of the less contribution uh, to define the outputs. So we want to ignore with some kind of the uh, some estimate with the longer the passes, but we just like simply just ignore this kind of the estimate, then that will basically result in some kind of the biased uh, the estimate. So here the basic idea is that we are basically uh, introducing some kind of the statistical way to draw about those kind of things. So if you are familiar with the draw about kind of things in the neural net, you can see that this is kind of a similar kind of idea, right? Uh, so we are basically uh, randomly draw out this kind of the longer pass the, the computation uh, by just setting some kind of the threshold and also drawing some kind of a random sample uh, from the uniform distribution. Uh, so basically, typically we set this C to be zero. And what we can do is that every time when you have some kind of the longer pass the, comp the computation, uh, we basically set a some kind of, uh, draw some kind of sample from the uniform distribution. And if this sample has the greater value than the threshold, uh, then we basically calculate uh, the estimate while scaling it uh, with basically one over the one minus Q. Uh, otherwise, we just like stop the sampling and basically terminate the computation. So this is kind of the statistical the way that we can basically cut out some kind of the computation with the longer the passes. So that's also kind of the interesting uh, kind of the idea. Uh, then what you can see is that uh, if we uh, have some this kind of a new estimator that has the uh, uh, direct illumination and also like the, uh, the light emission and direct illumination and also the uh, the the length of the three of the kind of indirect illumination and having this kind of the uh, you know large roulette the, the estimator then we can also result in this kind of the unbiased estimator and we can also apply this kind of same the Russian roulette the idea for the every depth of the sample. Uh, so that's just kind of the, the some of the ideas that we can make some kind of the more efficient uh, the computation. But here also the question might be is that it's always good to have this kind of like Russian roulette. Uh, obviously, there might be some kind of the uh, some things that we are basically compromising uh, with this kind of the uh, dropping out of the longer the passes. So some of the questions that we can think about might be is that like how much the variance will be increased, uh, especially like when you set like this the those the threshold of the Q value. Uh, depending on how we choose this kind of Q value, how much the variance will be basically uh, be changed. Obviously, the variance will be increased, right? Uh, so there will be kind of less chances that we are basically converging to some kind of the, the right answer as we basically cut out some of the computation. So we can also think about like calculating this variance uh, and see how much do the variance will be increased uh, depending on the threshold of the Q value. So this might be some of the things that we can think about in this collective like, Russian led this system. And also the thing is that like this will be basically the cases that we are sampling the points uh, over the, the surface of the objects. So the typical the kind of system of the ray tracing would be is that uh, we are having some kind of the arrangement of the 3D objects in the scene. Uh, we are basically having some kind of surfaces uh, of the some kind of multiple the 3D masses in the scene. And then we will be need to basically uh, you know, uh, sampling some of the points over the surfaces. And here the question is that every time when you basically increase the length of the pass, how we sample kind of the new point in the scene. And also the typical the idea for this is that we first sample a object uh, based on their the surface area. So if we have some kind of the multiple objects in the, for example, like indoor scene uh, with chairs and the, the tables, desks, like or some kind of the other kind of words, floors, many kind of things, uh, we are first selecting the object where we are going to sample a point. Uh, based on their kind of the surface area. And then uh, for the sampled, uh, this kind of the object in the scene, then we are also uh, sampling a point uh, over the, the object with the surface. Uh, and then actually what we are going to do uh, in this kind of like the past construction is that uh, starting from the kind of the point in the image plane, uh, we are basically constructing a pass in the incremental way. Uh, so what we do is that uh, for every the point, PI in the trajectory, uh, we first basically sample uh, the solid angle based on the BRDF that we have uh, for that point. And then we basically generate a new direction. 
And then we simply basically you know, uh, trace the array and define the, the next intersection the point, the pi plus one. And we are basically repeating this process uh, until we reach to the kind of the limit of this kind of length of the pass, or until we basically reach to some kind of the light source. Uh, so this is like very simple, uh, high level the idea. Obviously there are lots of the details in the kind of the real the system. And also one small thing is that uh, we are not only basically sampling based on the BRDF, but because uh, we are also competing, since we are also competing the LTE, the light transfer the equation as kind of integral of the surface, uh, we are basically uh, correcting this kind of sampling PD like this, uh, based on the kind of the relationship, the differentiable, the solid angle, and the differentiable the area that we also have seen in the previous the, uh, the lecture. So the relationship between these two was basically defined like this, right? So since we are basically now taking the integral over the, uh, the surface, not uh, integral over the, the solid angle, now we are basically uh, not only sampling based on the BRDF, but, but somehow like, you know, uh, rectifying the PDE, uh, the PDF using this kind of the, um, the equation. Uh, but so in a way that we can basically sample uh, based on the, the surface. Uh, so these are basically the basic idea about basically incrementally constructing some of the paths and also doing some kind of the path tracing to calculate uh, the uh, the LTE. So this is like some kind of the high level the idea in terms of like how we can really do the path tracing. Uh, but uh, for some more the details, I recommend you to check out the code. Uh, so actually the, our deployment the assignment is not uh, including the parts of the path tracing, which is actually quite might be uh, the complicated uh, for the implementation. But while the, the path tracing uh, is not included uh, in the problem in the assignment uh, for your own the, the, the programming, actually the, the path tracing should be basically included uh, in the base code. So I recommend you to check out uh, in the code and also more the complete version of the, the path tracing, I also recommend you to check out the, uh, the physically based rendering the book. So they have like all the ideas about this in the path tracing uh, implementation. Uh, do you have any questions on this? So this was kind of the uh, wrap up of some of the basic idea of the global illumination. And today actually the main topic is about the reflection model. So I'm going to briefly uh, explain some of the ideas that we did not uh, discuss in the previous lecture. Uh, so in the light transport equation and also for the reflection equation, we are basically assuming that the BRDF uh, is basically given as kind of the material property for the surface. So BRDF was basically the uh, the bidirectional reflectance distribution function, uh, which is basically defining some kind of the uh, the ratio between the differentiable the outgoing the radiance and also the dif differentiable the incoming the radiance. Uh, so when you basically uh, define this kind of ratio between these two, uh, this is basically defining some kind of the properties of the material that we can basically uh, separate of the surface of the objects. Uh, so we are going to discuss some of the more the details about the PRDF and also uh, so far we only discuss some of the cases that we are only having the reflection. Uh, but in the real the cases, we can also see some of the cases that the light basically pass through the objects, right? Uh, since this is the case that we also see some kind of this transmission as well. Uh, so we are also briefly uh, going to discuss some of the ideas about like how we can combine the reflection and the transmission as well uh, in this kind of the uh, rendering the pipeline. So before we get into the discussion about the reflection and transmission, uh, let's briefly see some of the uh, some major the properties of the BRDF. So especially when you want to do some kind of like physically correct the rendering, uh, we need to basically you know, satisfy this kind of the constraints uh, for the BRDF. Uh, the first property is that all the output of the, uh, basically, yeah, all the output of the BRDF should be basically the non-negative number uh, because we are not uh, defining any kind of the negative quantity for the, any kind of the light, uh, the radiometric kind of things. Uh, there's no basically negative the quantity for the radiance over things. So obviously the uh, the BRDF, this kind of ratio also should be some kind of the non-negativity number. So this is the first property. And for many kind of the, some physical the situation also, uh, this the reciprocity also should be satisfied, which basically means that uh, if we have some kind of the ratio with the uh, incoming direction and the outgoing direction, the opposite side also should have the same the ratio. So when you basically flip, 
the, in, the incoming and the outgoing direction. So we are basically having uh, the outgoing direction as the incoming direction, and also the other way around. Uh, we also should have some kind of the same the ratio of this kind of the uh, reflectors. Uh, so this is also kind of the secondary property. And this is also the property that actually we have seen in the previous lecture, the energy the conservation. Uh, obviously, the total the, the energy of the light uh, that is basically reflected uh, from a specific direction uh, should be equal or the less than of the, the energy that we are basically uh, receiving as kind of the incoming light. So what we can see is that uh, when you take the integral of this kind of the DRDF uh, for the outgoing direction, the sum of this kind of the basically sum of this kind of the DRDF for the all interactions of the uh, outgoing light uh, should be one or the less than one. So this is kind of the property for the energy conservation. So what's the exactly case that we are having the less than one uh, of this kind of the uh, integral of the DRDF? If this kind of the uh, integral of this kind of PR therefore the outgoing direction is less than one, not equal to one, then what would be kind of the, such kind of the cases? Question two. So the question is like, what would be the case that the integral like this BRDF for the outgoing direction is less than one, not equal to one. Yeah, obviously there would be the case that the light is basically the power of the light was basically observed. Uh, some portion of the power was basically observed by the at the uh the surface by the reflection. So when we basically see that this is basically exactly equal to one, that's the case that we are basically conserving the energy without the without any kind of absorption of the, the light, the, the power of the light. Uh but if this integral is basically less than one, that means that the sum of the part of the, the light the power was basically observed by the, the into the surface uh, with the reflection. So this was the case. Uh, so we also have seen that like you know, we uh, you know, need to basically satisfy those kind of things, uh, not to basically see some any kind of the, the divergence, uh, some kind of the explosion of the, the light the power uh, in the previous the you know diffuse the sphere the case uh, in the previous lecture. So these are basically three the main properties uh, for the BRDF. And also some of the other the properties that we can think about might be is that whether the uh, the BRDF will be isotropic uh, or the unisotropic, uh, unisotropic. So for many of the cases, for some kind of the papers, for some kind of the paint, many kind of thing, thing, the cases, actually we are seeing some kind of the isotropic the material. So the isotropic the material is defined in this way. So if you choose, a point on the surface and rotate the, the surface around its three normal axis at the point, then the distribution of the light reflected at the point does not change. And so this is kind of the case that uh, the definition of kind of the isotropic material. So this means that while we fix the direction of the incoming light and also kind of the, the viewing direction, if we only change, uh, rotate the surface uh, of the kind of the objects, uh, with respect to the normal direction of the, the point that we are seeing some kind of reflection, then the distribution of the light reflected at the point uh, is not being changed. So for those kind of the cases, uh, typically for the BRDF, we are basically having some four the parameters, right? Uh, we are having the speaker the coordinates for the incoming light direction and the outgoing the right direction, uh, which means that the typical the BRDF will be four parameter the function. But if we basically assume that uh, we are having the isotropic the BRDF, then we don't need to actually have the four parameters, actually three parameters uh, surface. Uh, then how can you also define some kind of the three parameter function for the isotropic the BRDF uh, with this definition of the this particular the coordinates? Basically, the uh, theta is basically indicating the elevation, and the pi is indicating the azimuth, right?
So this is actually the case that we are only rotating, we are not rotating kind of like incoming light direction or some viewing direction, but rotating, for example, the surface. So when, for example, like when the surface is like the paper, like think about that, like we are having some kind of a paper on the table and we are rotating the, the paper on the table while having the same the environment of the light and also the viewing direction. And we see the same the distribution of the light, those cases. So basically this means that like, actually this is not the case that we can just ignore the outgoing, the, uh, the, you know, the azimuth of the outgoing direction. But actually what this basically means that uh, we just need to consider the relative the azimuth uh, between the two, the uh, incoming and the outgoing directions. Uh, does it make sense? So if we want to see some kind of effects that you know, we are seeing some same di distribution, uh, whatever kind of the some you know rotations of the surface that we see, uh, then we can actually define the BRDF in terms of like having the elevation of the incoming and the outgoing direction and taking actually just like relative the you know uh, relative the azimuth uh, between the two directions. So this is kind of like the, the way that we can define some kind of the uh, three parameter function uh, for the isotropic the material. Uh, so which is kind of like some more some like more general cases we can see in many kind of the real the objects. Uh, but obviously there are some kind of the unisotropic the material uh, which is basically having some kind of the some some patterns of the uh, over the surface. So for the like uh, CD here or some kind of the hair and the clothes uh, for those kind of the cases uh, we cannot uh, define some kind of three parameter DPR left for those are some kind of the unisotropic cases, meaning the, the, uh, the four different parameters. Uh, so those are some kind of the basic properties that we can think about the BRDF. And if we just you know, review some of the basic types of the reflection, uh, which is defined with some kind of the BRDF, uh, then we can also, as we also discussed in the previous lecture, uh, we can think about some ideal the spectral the reflection and also either the diffuse reflection or some kind of the other types of the, some spectral reflections. So if we briefly review those kind of the ideas, for all those cases, uh, what we can think about is that uh, if we only care about the, you know, uh, the azimuth of the light. So we, when you basically define some kind of the local coordinates with respect to the normal direction of the surface, and if we only see some kind of the projected uh, direction of the lights, uh, at the, the, the surface, uh, which is like, you know, defined with the kind of the, the surface normal here, then we can see that the projected, uh, the direction of the light always basically goes straight, right? So be, if the light was basically coming like this uh, in the projected direction, and the projected direction of the outgoing the light should be basically uh, the same direction, right? Going to the same. So we, we can see that, you know, uh, when you basically have the direction uh, to the kind of the, the viewing kind of the viewer here, and also the, the, the outgoing, sorry, the direction to some kind of the objects, we can see that the azimuth was basically flipped uh, 180 degree in this kind of the projected space. Uh, while we, when you consider some kind of the elevation uh, of the angle of the light, uh, then for the ideal reflection the case, uh, then we can co compute this kind of the elevation of the outgoing direction, also the incoming direction uh, with the row of the reflection, right? So this is also a thing that we, uh, could learn in the high school kind of things, right? So when you basically define some kind of the angle of the incidence of the light, oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. angle of the incidence of the light here, and also the angle of the reflection, uh, which are basically defined with respect to the, the surface number, uh, we can basically define some kind of the inf incoming and the outgoing direction in a way that these two angles to be the, exactly the same uh, for the elevation. So this is basically simple, the uh, row of the reflection. And here also the thing is that uh, in terms of like computing the uh, reflection equation and also the LTE, the path tracing, uh, this basically you know, result in this kind of the, the drug delta the function for the BRDF, right? So if we think about basically BRDF, this kind of like ideal the spectral reflection, uh, we only have some kind of the, some constant value uh, when the incoming direction is exactly the same uh, with some kind of the uh, reflection direction of the outgoing uh, the, the the direction, right? Otherwise, this the function uh, should basically be turned zero, right? 
So basically, this will be the case that we are basically involving some drug delta function in our dB or dF. That means that uh, when you take the integral of like this kind of like you know reflection the equation, actually the integral of this equation will become the some kind of the value that we can directly compute. So in this case, we don't need to basically compute any kind of the uh, the Monte Carlo estimate. We can just directly see uh, what we kind of the direction that we need to shoot the ray uh, in the ray tracing. And we can just directly compute uh, this kind of the uh, the light the the you know uh, outgoing the radiance. So would it be good for the uh, ray tracing the computation or not? Do you think that like so if we only have some kind of the ideal spectral the reflection of the metros in the scene, uh, do you think that this will basically make this kind of like computation easier or not? Any thoughts on this? So we can think about some kind of the some very like of course some sort of the indoor scene that is like composed by some kind of all the glass like the objects in the scene some crazy room uh, that we're gonna basically render the things uh, using some this kind of the PRDF that involves the drug delta the function that looks like we can just like avoid the computation of the Monte Carlo estimate. Uh, because we don't need to take the integral, right? Then what of the issue that we are having this kind of the involving drug delta uh, the function in the equation? Actually, you know, having this kind of like drug delta the function uh like involves many kind of the challenges in the ray tracing uh because like if we have some kind of the distribution uh in our dprdf that we can sample some of the points in terms of that you know we can uh reach to some kind of the surface uh uh some kind of the point and at the end we can really even like sample the points over the light source uh in terms of that we can really uh get some kind of the competition from the like the light emission uh, from the light source, right? But if we only have the ideal the spectral the reflection, uh, which means that there is like only one specific the direction that we can really get some kind of the uh, some contribution of like this kind of equation, right? Which means that there is no sampling of the direction. There is only one direction that we can basically shoot the ray uh, in our the path tracing. And we don't know how many kind of the balances that we need to reach out to some kind of the one of the point uh, of the light source. Actually, in the, some kind of the worst cases, uh, we may need some kind of the tones of kind of the reflections, the balances uh, to reach out to some of the one of the point in the light source. Uh, which actually means that uh, while it looks like we are making the computation the easier, actually it can involve some kind of the computation with the very long the path of the uh, the, the, the computation. Otherwise, you know, there is no way that we can really uh, calculate uh, this kind of the integral. So if we actually have some like all the cases that we are only having the ideal the spectral the reflection, uh, the computation actually becomes much more the challenging uh, in terms of that actually we may need some kind of the very long the passes of the trajectory uh, to reach out some of the, the, the points in the light source. So actually, you know, this is not that easy case uh, to get some kind of the uh some some kind of the realistic to render the the images yeah. but obviously in many kind of the real cases uh it's hard to assume that we are having some perfect uh spectral reflection uh we're gonna see this kind of some sort of the glossy reflection that we are having not exactly shooting the ray into the opposite direction but having some kind of the distribution uh near this kind of the some opposite direction right uh, for those cases, so, so we can define the glossy reflection uh, like this by having some kind of the uh, some sort of the um, the, the dot product between these two uh, with some kind of the the power of this kind of the, the dot product uh, while controlling this kind of the distribution of the lights uh, with the kind of the the power term here with the parameter here. 
Uh, so this is like also the simple the idea which was introduced in the 1970s by uh, Berlin and Defong. So this is called the Berlin and Defong reflection the model. Uh, for some kind of a glossy reflection. Uh, for the also diffuse the you no know, the reflection for the perfect diffusion reflection. So this is the case that now also the BRDF uh, becomes a, some kind of the constant variable. So when you define the BRDF as the constant value like this, uh, with the low over the pi, then we can see that uh, the BR, uh, the you know the reflection the equation can be calculated like this. So it's basically just nothing but multiplying this constant value uh, by the incoming the irradiance, right? So this was basically the definitions of the irradiance. So we can basically uh, compute the kind of the reflection equation by just taking the multiplication like this constant uh, with the incoming the irradiance. So yeah, actually this is so like one of the reasons like why we are defining the BRDF as kind of the ratio between the incoming, uh, between the outgoing the differential irradiance and the differential differential irradiance uh, because like then we can define the idea the diffusion reflection is kind of the constant term like this. So here one of the question might be is that like why we are defining this constant term as not just like the one single value but as basically the rule over the pi. So here the question might be is that uh, what's the meaning of the rule here, right? Uh, do you, can you guess what's the meaning of the rule here? Why don't you just like, don't you define this as kind of some constant value C here? So actually we can see that the, the rule means the kind of the ratio between the outgoing the irradiance and the incoming irradiance. So for the diffuse the reflection, what we can see is that the outgoing the irradiance should be uh, the constant over the all directions, right? So if we also compute the outgoing the, uh, the irradiance uh, in this way, then we can see that actually it is defined as kind of the rule times the incoming the irradiance. So from the definitions of like, you know, how we define the BRDF, uh, we can see that the rule term there uh, is basically defining the kind of ratio between the outgoing the radiance and the incoming the uh, outgoing the radiance and over the incoming the radiance, uh, which should be basically less than one uh, to basically have some kind of the uh, you know, satisfy the energy the the conservation the property. So this is basically the way that we can define the uh, perfect uh, spectral reflection and also the perfect uh, diffuse reflection. Right? So this kind of the simple the BRDF uh, for some very special cases, so like perfect uh, the spectral reflection and also perfect diffusion reflection and also some of the kind of the glossy reflection uh, actually has been discussed even before like people start to work on some kind of the ray tracing. Uh, so if we just uh, briefly review what we also have discussed in the introduction to computer graphics course in this just 3 AD, uh, you know, typically in, even in the main kind of the some uh, old kind of the graphics state pipeline, uh, especially using some kind of the uh, you know rasterization, uh, we can say that the illumination, the local illumination, uh, is typically kind of like represented as kind of a combination of some kind of the ambient light uh, and also some kind of the diffuse reflection and the spectral reflection. So when you basically like just like add up all those kind of things, uh, this kind of like simple the way that we can define some kind of the uh, some local the illumination, and this also has been used. Uh, for some decades, uh, even in the simple the uh, the rasterization the based the pipeline in the OpenGL, so this is still being used uh, in many kind of the OpenGL uh, the pipelines 
uh, while you know, if we start to see some kind of the some more complex DBRDF, uh, we can actually start to define some kind of the more realistic, uh, physically complex some kind of the uh, illuminating the models uh, with some kind of the more special the DBRDF. So this is the kind of the basic the idea and the connection with some kind of the uh, some old idea in the 1975. Any questions on this? So today we are also going to briefly discuss like how we can also define not only the reflection, but also the transmittance as well. Uh, so now we are also going to discuss not only the BRDF, but also the BTDF, uh, which is now defining bidirectional transmittance directional function. So when you also combine the BRDF uh, and the BTDF, uh, this can be also called like uh, BSDF, uh, bidirectional scattering directional function. Uh, and also, I did not prepare this slides for today, but also there are some kind of the more the complex the model, like the subsurface scattering. So here, what we are basically already assuming is that the light is basically reflected at a point like this, while like light is being transmitted uh, inside into the some the medium. Uh, so this is the transmittance. But there are some of the cases that we can say that the light is basically going through inside the some kind of the medium and popping out from the different positions. Uh, so this is the case that we are seeing like the subsurface scattering. So we can also think about like defining some kind of the bidirectional function for those kind of cases. One good question is that if we define this kind of the subsurface scattering, then how many of the parameters do we need? So for the BRDF, uh, for the some general cases, we are also considering some kind of anastropic uh, the BRDF. We have seen that we need the four parameters, right? But if we also define some kind of the subsurface scattering, then how many parameters do we need? Yeah, it obviously depends on like how we define the subsurface scattering, right? But at least like we will need the six parameters, like two for the incoming light, two for the outgoing direction, and also the two for basically the direction that we are moving over the surface. So if we have the polar coordinates for this kind of like uh, offset over the surface, then we will need at least like 60 parameters. So we're gonna also briefly uh, discuss the basic idea about the subsurface scattering uh, next time. But let's move on to some kind of the ideas for the transmittance. So as we have seen some kind of the examples, like having some sort of the reflection, now we can also see some kind of cases that we have in some kind of transmittance uh, of some kind of the lights into the, the surface. Uh, so the how we can define some kind of the uh, you know, compute the direction of the, the transmission. Uh, so basically, what we can see is that like we can recall some of the kind of the ideas that also we have learned in the high school kind of things. Uh, so we can basically calculate uh, the outgoing direction of the, the transmission with this business law. Uh, by the way, the, all the things that we are going to discuss for today is not any kind of the precise like simulation of the all the optics kind of things. So you can see that this is like very simple, some kind of the approximation of some kind of some feature called the ideas. Uh, for some kind of the uh, make some kind of the competition to be like efficient, right? 
So this is basically some very review of some kind of the very basic, some kind of the physical properties. And we are uh, going to focus more on basically how we're gonna model these things uh, for the computation. Right? So if we break, briefly review some of the, some of the properties of the transmission, uh, basically this will be the case that we are having some kind of like one medium here, uh, which will be, for example, like the air. And we are having another the medium, uh, which might be like the water, like the glass, whatever kind of things, right? Then the light is basically, uh, you know, uh, coming from the air and then, you know, getting into the, some kind of the medium that can be the water or something, right? Then the direction, uh, so when you have some kind of incoming direction of the light, uh, the outgoing direction uh, is really basically determined uh, based on the index of the reflection, right? Of the, each of the medium. Uh, so when you have the two medium, uh, each of the medium will have the different, may have the different index of the reflection, uh, which is basically indicating the speed reduction of the light uh, each of the, in the medium. And what we need to care about is that we only need to care about the relative the index of the reflection. So when you have like, uh, the sine the theta i, then we actually need to just like think about um, like t sine t. So depending on like what's the kind of the ratio of the index of the reflection of the like the two media, uh, we're gonna see that you know, how much the light is basically depended. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, with this kind of like reflection, right? So here one quick question is the like. Uh, if we have some kind of the uh, relative index of the, the reflection uh, greater than the one, then what's the kind of the some the, the bending of the lights that we're gonna see? If this like relative index of the reflection is greater than one, then what kind of the trend that we're gonna see? Uh, yeah, let me move on a bit quickly. So obviously this is the case that, I mean, this is very typical the case, like the incoming the media will be typically air, right? Or some kind of vacuum. Uh, or then the out, I mean, you know, some kind of the another the medium might be something else, or which might be water or something. Uh, with, and typically the, in the vacuum, like the case, like, you know, the index of the reflection is just like the one. And the index of the reflection of the other the medium will be typically greater than the one, right? So this is the typical the case. Uh, so when this, what does this mean is that like when you increase this value, then this will, will be decreased, right? So which means that the light will be uh, bending toward uh, the, the, surface, the surface number, like it's going like this, right? As the, the, this, uh, the number is basically being increased, right? So the answer is that the lift light will bend towards the surface number, right? And the, actually the opposite case will be this. Uh, so, so the question might be is that like, uh, now we can calculate uh, the, the reflection, the angle like this, but if the sign of the reflection, the angle is greater than the one, then what are the kind of situation that we're gonna see? Uh, for those kind of the cases, so as the, you know, uh, the sign of the reflection, the angle like get closer uh, to the zero, uh, then what we're gonna see is that the light is basically reflected uh, near the, uh, the surface like this. And if this value becomes like greater than the one, uh, then what we're gonna see is that there is no reflection. We're gonna also just see that you no know, the uh, the light is like only just like reflected uh, without any kind of the reflection. Right? Uh, so this is kind of the typical kind of the cases that you can see. So based on this, what we can observe is that uh, you might have you know have seen this kind of the image like which is called the optical the manhole. 
So under the water, what we can typically see is that like the light is coming into this kind of a cone like the shape. And the reason why we are basically seeing that the sunlight is like coming into some kind of a cone like the shape under the water is that uh you know inside the, the water, what we can see is that the all the lights are basically reflected or only in this kind of the cone like the region. For all the other regions, we are seeing the total the uh you know sorry. Yeah, basically we are seeing some kind of the total the internal the reflection uh, in the outside the region. So we are seeing some kind of the dark region uh, outside of the cone while we are basically seeing that all the sunlights are coming into the uh, some into the, this kind of specific cone. So that's why we are seeing this kind of like optical dynamo. And also some of the properties of the BTDF uh, for the bidirectional the transmitters, the directional the function is that uh, the BTDFs are basically not the reciprocal anymore. So which means that uh, when you flip the incoming and the outgoing direction, uh, the ratio can be changed. So this is quite obvious when you think about the uh, the kind of the, the, the properties of the, the transmitters, right? the transmission. And also the thing is that the index of the reflection uh, is not constant over the, the wavelengths, but it can be actually changed uh, depending on the wavelengths that we are basically having for each of the, the light. Uh, so which means that depending on the, the color, we may basically have some kind of different kind of index, the index of the reflection and also different the patterns uh, of the kind of like uh, the reflections, different angle of the reflection. Right? So what we can typically see is that like when you have some kind of the constant uh, index of the reflection, we're gonna see this kind of the rendered image. Uh, but if we basically apply this kind of the, some kind of the variance, uh, so the uh, the index of the reflection, uh, depending on the wavelengths, then we're gonna see that the color is being changed like this in the final the rendered image. So these are basically all of the how we determine uh, basically the angle of the reflection and also the reflection, right? And here also the question would be is that, so when you have some kind of the light, which is like in, coming into some kind of the uh, boundary of the two media, how we can also determine the proportion of the light, which will be deflected and also the deflected, right? Uh, so this is all about basically the, how much of the amount of light will be basically deflected and also the reflected. So there was kind of the lots of the theory in the optics of like how we determine this kind of the proportion of like those like deflection deflection. Uh, but basically long straight short, uh, what we can see is that uh, when you see the light as kind of the electromagnetic wave, uh, we are having this kind of the electric field and also the magnetic field, which is like also one of the electric field. So if we just briefly see the basic idea here, uh, we can basically see uh, the light as kind of the two polarized lights, right? Uh, so one is basically the S polarized light, uh, which is basically the uh, case that the electric field is basically the perpendicular uh, to the uh, the plane of the instance for those cases. And the other type of the light is basically the, the case, the P polarized light. Uh, those are the case that we are having the electric field, which is parallel to the, the plane of the instance. So you can think that these are like the two types of the polarized lights. And depending on like this kind of the polarization of the lights, actually we can uh, check that the proportion or like being reflected uh, is basically being changed. So this is kind of the proportion of the light that will be reflected when we have the S polarized lights. And this is kind of the uh, reflection of the, uh, the proportion of the reflection when we have the uh, P polarized lights. But when you basically simplify all this kind of the uh, explanation and just see that like we're having some kind of the unpolarized delights, uh, we can simply basically compute uh, the reflect the proportion of the reflection uh, into this kind of form. So this is kind of the uh, the Fresnel equation, and using this like Fresnel equation, we can uh, easily calculate. Uh, basically, it's kind of like simply approximation uh, in terms of like calculating the uh, proportion of the reflection uh, into this way. But here basically one thing is that like, one thing that we need to uh, notice is that basically this kind of like the proportion of the reflection uh, is also determined uh, based on the uh, angle of the incidence of the light. So this is basically not constant uh, depending on the, the property of the this surface, but actually this the proportion is determined uh, not only by the, the material the properties, uh, but also basically by the, the angle of the incidence of the light. So actually what you can see is that we can see this kind of the graph. 
uh, when we basically see that the light is like coming into the glass uh, from the vacuum, uh, when the, the relative index of the reflection is 1.5, then we can see that uh, depending on the angle of the instance, uh, the fractional the, the, the coefficients, the, uh, the, the fraction of the reflection is being changed like this. So this is the case that when you just like, you know, divide uh, the fraction of the reflection, the, the reflection is kind of the half and half, uh, but when you basically calculate uh, the proportion, uh, you know, you know, more like correctly using the fraction of the equation, then we can see this can be more realistic, the image. Then here the question is that how we can also uh, compute both the reflection and the transmission uh, using our kind of the LTE, the formulation, right? So this will be the case that when you have this kind of the, you know, the reflection, the equation, now we are having kind of the two factors, like one is basically having some kind of the uh, idea, the spectral, the reflection, and also this is the case that we're having the idea, the spectral, the transmission, uh, which is basically divided by the kind of the proportion that we are competing with the present equation. That what we can see is that this will be the case that we are shooting the ray uh, for this kind of like the perfect uh, spectral reflection and transmission. Uh, we're gonna shoot a two rays, like one is for the reflection uh, with this proportion, and this will be the case that we are shooting the transmission array uh, with this proportion. Then we can do the same kind of the ray tracing with the past the, the tracing in terms like uh, every for every kind of the bounds of the the, the ray uh, intersection with the, the point. Uh, we are basically shooting the two ray, like one is for the reflection, the other one is the basically uh, reflection, uh, transmission into the, the surface, and basically doing all this kind of the uh, the path tracing, uh, which will basically uh, result in basically some exponential growth in terms of the number of the rays, right? So every uh, the bounds of the rays, we're gonna have the two rays, right? Uh, then we're gonna see that actually there are lots of kind of the, some of the ways that we can uh, construct the passes. So we can the one of the way that we can also simplify this kind of the uh, multiple of the estimates for those kind of cases uh, might be is that we also uh, you know randomly sampling either of the reflection and the transmission rays uh, based on the the probability uh, of the, the, the which is defined with the the fractional the, the coefficients. Uh, so when you also draw a some kind of the random sample uh, with from the uniform distribution. Uh, when this sample has the, the value which is smaller than the first of the, the coefficients, then we should be reflection the ray. Otherwise, we are shooting some kind of transmission the ray. So this is what's kind of the uh, statistical the way that we can make some kind of the more efficient competition for the uh, Monte Carlo estimate uh, while basically choosing uh, which one, which of the rays we, we're gonna shift. Right. Uh, some basic idea. And also some kind of the more uh, the common the cases that we're gonna face in many kind of the rendering the situation is that uh, we are also having some kind of the thin plate uh, with some kind of the uh, some some you know index of the reflection. So for example, let's think about that uh, we are having some kind of the very thin the glass in the air, uh, which means that uh, we're gonna actually have some kind of the two boundaries of the different the, the media. Uh, so for those kind of cases, when you have kind of like incoming array uh, from the air, uh, then we're gonna see that we're having the one reflection and the transmission rays, and then we're gonna do this kind of things again uh, in at this surface, having another reflection and the transmission. Then we're gonna see that we're gonna uh, repeat those kind of the things, having the two rays. Then this will be the case that we're having the transmission reflection and the transmission, right? And so all the reflection uh, will can be considered as kind of the accumulation of like those the black rays accumulating uh, basically the uh, the reflection after also like transmitting uh, under this kind of the, the the medium right and also the transmission can be considered as kind of the summation like all those kind of the cases so if you see like the reflection the case this will be the case that we are just having the uh, single bounds the reflection. And then transmission, reflection, transmission, right? And the next ray might be is that transmission and the three reflection inside the medium, medium, and also the transmission. And the next one might be is that like one transmission and the five times of the reflection and then transmission, right? So we can think that like the reflection can be considered as kind of like accumulation, like all those kind of the cases. Then can you somehow like make some kind of the simple form? Or like seeing some kind of the convergence of this kind of the series, right? So if we we have seen that in the previous lecture, 
the a Newman disease uh, can uh, is basically converging to uh, this, right? Uh, when basically the alpha is basically the resident one. So when you assume that you know, you know those kind of things, uh, can you see some kind of the can you so was the kind of the some point that we are basically converging uh, for those kind of these trees? Uh, let's only uh, see the the convergence of the R prime. Yeah, so as you can see, you no, know, this will be the case that we are having this kind of the R term and T times R times T. And after that, what we are seeing is that we are having the, like two more reflection, right? So we're having two more reflection in the transmission and two more reflection in the transmission. So every time we are basically multiplying R squared. Uh, so what you can see is that this is the same as basically R plus. And then we are basically starting with the uh, T times the R. And then we're gonna see like one over one minus like r squared, right? So we can see that actually this is basically the same that now we are slightly modifying the uh the fraction of the, the reflection uh by adding this amount of the term, right? Uh while from the energy the, the conservation, what we can see is that t prime also is to be basically the same with the one minus r prime, right? Uh so we can see that. Uh, from this kind of these trees, so the the convergence to like those trees, uh, when you have like not assuming having some kind of the some objects, but actually having like the shares like the 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 object having only the surface uh, in the scene, uh, we can also calculate update basically the the fraction of the reflection and the uh, reflection the reflection the transmission uh, by adding this amount of the term uh, into the the proportion of the reflection and also taking the one minus the r prime for the transmission. And you can see that in the graph, as we basically bury the uh, angle of the instance, actually the difference between the uh, single interface and the double interface is not making big difference. But obviously you can see that the thin plate is basically having slightly higher uh, the, the ratio of the deflection in this case. So based on that, we can also uh, try to render some kind of the thin plate, like the thin glass uh, like this.
Uh, so those are basically the basic idea. Then we can also incorporate uh, so transmission in the uh, ray tracing the system. So I'm going to stop here. So actually, there are some of the ideas for the micro facet, you know, the model for the scattering, and also I briefly mentioned about the sub subsurface scattering. So next time I'm going to briefly review those ideas about the micro facet, the reflection, and also the subsurface the scattering. And so far, we assume that the light sub has been moving in some kind of the vacuum the space, basically empty space. But typically, you no, know, I mean, so real the kind of the environment is not basically empty. We are having the air in the scene, and also the light basically may pass through the inside some kind of the smoke or water or something. So having some kind of the participating media. So for those kind of the cases, when you have some kind of the participating media, how will the the you know uh, the rendering the system will be changed? Uh, those are also the main topic that we are going to discuss next time. Uh, so this is the idea about the volume rendering. And if we also start to discuss the volume rendering, uh, this is also the basic idea about the recent the neural rendering technique as well. So we are going to also going to move on the uh, neural rendering with the, the NERF idea. And also we are also going to discuss some very recent ideas about the neural rendering as well. So that's the plan for the next the couple of weeks. And if you have any questions on those things, please feel free to post on the questions on the Slack. So we can also discuss on the Slack after the lecture. Any questions? Okay, and I will see you next Monday. Yeah. Thank you. Bye.